PG Ty here again. Welcome back to Modern East Basics. Today we're going to be working on um, some elements of striking. We're going to be building on our first two videos in the series, which are how to hold a stick and how to strike with a stick. And those are going to be up there in the corner. We're going to build on those and we're going to talk about some of the characters or methods when you're actually striking. So we've talked about how to hold, how some basic considerations are to strike, and then what are you doing when you're striking. That's what we're talking about here because future we want to go on to the, the styles that you do for striking. One of the first elements of striking, we know we can strike all the way through something, right? We're used to that, it makes sense, okay? Makes sense, we know what we might be doing, okay? So that would be the first character. If I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna get used to that. I'm gonna go through a target, okay? Through a target, okay? That's a very powerful strike. Uh, in some styles, they call that lob tick. So lob tick is a, is a follow through strike. It's very powerful. Um, you might wanna block that with a dos manos rather than, hey, I'm gonna block, stop it here because it's gonna get knocked back. Even if I have a brace, it's probably gonna get knocked back because it's full power. The other thing that it is similar to is if I have an ax handle or something like a baseball bat, you're gonna have that full power strike as well. So those are generally all the way through, follow through strikes. They're very powerful. You have to set it blocked incorrectly, and dos manos is, is your is your best bet. And a dos manos that jams in uh, close in is probably your best bet. Another character that the other end of the spectrum, some styles call a wittick. I call it a wittick as well. It's a recoil strike. So I'm going to go kind of at, and as soon as I hit, I'm going to recoil, hit, recoil, okay, hit, recoil, hit, recoil, hit, recoil. So it goes just to hitting, causing the damage at that target, and coming back. And I can recoil on the other side. So I don't have to recoil the same direction every time. I can recoil and go to the other side. Recoil, so that's an at. And that can block with a, perhaps with a single arm, maybe a brace if, you, if you're worried about it. Um, different character, different energy, different uh, setup, okay? And different vulnerabilities, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, in between those two, you've got something where you're penetrating, you're not following all the way through, but it's still a pretty hard shot. And that gives you the ability to recover better, to abort better. So a lot of times you might have what looks like a follow through, but it's really just gonna go in and penetrate. So I call that an in strike. Imagine it going to the center of your target. So if, if I was gonna strike the shoulder, I'd be aiming for the center of my body. If I was gonna strike my temple, I'd be aiming for my brainstem, right? That's penetrating and it's got a certain amount of strength. So almost always a good idea is, is a brace block, however you do a brace block in your style. So that's sort of a spectrum. Those will be modified by ranges, okay? If I'm a, at a long range, I can do these follow through strikes and not worry too much about the danger I'm setting myself into because I can plan for them to come in and jam me. But if I'm in close and I do this follow ship strike and follow through, you're gonna jam me, block me up, and I'm, I'm way over here still trying to recover. So that's not a good thing. So what you would have to do in that case, if I'm gonna do a follow through strike, I'm gonna, as soon as I follow through and it goes through, right, I'm gonna recover right away. Same thing on this side, it follows through, it goes through, now it's through them, and I recover right away. So you'll see that in some of the closer installs, um, like Balintawak when they're doing their uh, Agak, right? When they're doing, or, or Modern Arnis when we're doing Tapi Tapi. Some of the better answers when you follow through is to recoil and that's in the middle of a confrontation. If you're doing a finisher, <laughs> go all out and do that because you hopefully set up that finisher fine. But in the middle for full power strikes and you're doing a follow through, your follow through should be all the way through and then recoil right away, okay? Typically we'll see that on something like a sublique. What range you do, are at will determine the character of the method of striking you end up using. So the flavor of the flavor, if you will. And we'll talk about, we'll show you that on the, on the uh, wooden dummy here in a second. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're in close and you do Wittick, that is not going to be so much of a, of a problem, except for Wittick's are not very strong, especially close in. Um, one of the things that's more likely, especially in a Wittick in a close range, I'm going to go here, right? I might follow up with the uh, right, a punch, okay? Because if I'm in close and I'm doing this, this is almost the same distance. So don't forget your other tools. A lot of times what we do is we make a joke. Somebody picks up a stick and how many weapons they have? Uh, one. If they put down a stick, how many weapons they have? Oh, they got 13, 18, however you count it, right? You got headbutts, knees, elbows, back of the wrist, punches, hips checks, feet, all of those things. Uh, but when you give somebody a weapon, they think I have to use the weapon only. 
range will determine how available that is for you. Um, the range will also determine what you have in the ability to manage, monitor, to delay your opponent. So in middle range and short range, a lot of times we'll do block, check, counter, right? Block, check, okay, strike. But if we're at long range and I'm, something's coming in, I'm gonna hit the strike or you or your hand, I'm not gonna reach out and check that because now I'm in to get hit, okay? So I might just block here and attack back. Might not use that check hand, it might save it for when I can close the range. All right, let's take a step back from that and go back to the other character. I do a follow through strike. I can recover and do another strike. I can continue on and do a big another strike, or I can shorten the circle and do a florete. So the reason I want to talk about floretes today is because it's really just adding a a redo or a, that to that character of your strike. And so usually it applies to in or through striking. But if I strike through and I florete, I strike through and I florete, I strike through and I florete, there's, it's not completely a wrist twirl, it's a little bit of arm so that you don't lose your strength. And it's usually the same area of target. That's what I use for florete, using the same area. Now, it's not necessarily the same exact target, so you could come in with a strike, I could block you and then hit you. Okay, block you and hit you. Block the stick, hit your hand. Hit the hand, hit the elbow. Whatever I have to do, but the florete is that double strike. Now, the reason I want to talk about this separately from when we get to striking styles is because I look at it as a continuation of your move that you happen to be doing and giving you more options to use the flavors we just talked about. So, when you're doing a florete, you need to pivot at the wrist, not open up your hand. I'm not just talking about the fact that somebody might do a disarm on you. I'm talking about you get an incidental hit, it'll knock out of your hand if you're just holding on with, <laughs> with a pinch grip like that. The other thing is, is when you hit, if you hit something in the middle of that and anything gets in the way, you could disarm yourself because you hit something, because you're not controlling the stick. Lastly, um, the other characters, before we get to the wooden dummy, are what parts of the stick you use. Normally when we're striking, like I said, we use the last end of the stick. Depending on the range, depending on the situation, you can use certainly the point. It's a great tool. Um, we'll, talk, we'll show you some neat things to make it even more fun. Uh, and on the thing, you have two ways of using the punyu at least. Um, three if you count grabs and things like that. Um, but you also have things like, oh wow, I grabbed the stick wrong. So what am I gonna do? Or when you disarm someone, or if you happen to grab a stick, or you just picked up a stick and somebody attacks you, you're in the middle of the stick. How do you use the strike that way. So you, all right, so let's go to the uh, wooden dummy and we'll continue on from there. All right, so we're at the wooden dummy. I wanna show a few things. So the range I was talking about. If I'm using the long range and I'm hitting, right, following through, I can attack the limbs, I can attack the hands that are holding it. For hitting the body here, that's more of a medio range, right? But both of those are fine somewhat for following through. As long as I don't follow through and do a big wind up because he's going to come in and jam me. Follow through and do a big wind up he's going to come in and hit me. Okay. So it's easier to see that hey maybe it's okay to do a big wind up here because I got time before he comes in. Okay. So if I go in close and I go through and then recover, now I'm safer. I do a follow through and recover right away, I'm safer. Okay. So what I'm doing there is I'm striking him and I'm turning him to the side by pushing his arm. I usually like to push at the elbow so it doesn't bend. And then I'm hitting him again, okay? Short range, I've got in here and I want to do a follow through strike. So short range, remember, is, is a ba basically there. I can hit them with my fist, that's short range. So if I want to do a full power follow through strike, I better be ready to recover, okay? So you're going to have to have control. Good. You're still following through, right? You're still following through. As soon as it goes through, you recover. As soon as it goes through, you recover. Okay. For Wittick, so the other end of the spectrum, if you're just doing at, for long range, right, I'm Wittick, Wittick, Wittick. It might use it as a jab to then close the distance, right? Wham, right? So, but if you're in close and you do with it, it's kind of built in to be recovered. So you're a little safer there. But like I said, as you recover, you might want to hit, okay? 
If I go here, I would take, recover, I might hit. I go would take, I might hit. Okay? So some things to think about with range changes the character. And then, like I said, there's the end. It's hard to show in on the thing because I can't penetrate this wood because I'm just not that strong. But if I'm going to penetrate, it's going to be like that. And then I can renegade and recover, right? And I can do the same thing. So it's a little bit less committed and a little easier to recover from. So usually if you're in close range, you're probably going to do that as your power strike because it's sort of an in penetrating move, okay? The other thing I wanted to show on uh, the dummy was the alternates that I talked about. So punyo. So if I'm going to attack a punyo, it's certainly I can do basically a reverse poke, right? I can do a straight in kind of a stab if, like as if you had a knife, okay? I can do all those things. But another thing with a punyo is you can do a punch. You can hit with the side of it like it's a stick holding the other way. So I make it a punch but with the punyo. So I'm hitting with the side of the punyo there. If I was going at you, I'm hitting with the side there, okay? And even if I go the other way, I'm hitting with the side punyo right there to the jaw, right there and there. Boom. Okay? So it's almost like I'm hitting with my pinky, but I'm not. I'm hitting with the punyo that's exposed. Okay? So you can see that there. And that's a close range technique, but you're going to be close range sometimes. Punyos are a great tool for that. With the tuso, the tip, obviously we have straight in things. I like to do this, so hopefully you can see this. I'm going to come up with my knee and jam that, boom, right in there. That's going to penetrate a lot, okay? This can be aimed at the solar plexus, the groin, there, but with that knee augmenting it, I'll show you a little further back, that knee augmenting it, it's a very penetrating strike, okay? That's one of my favorite. Um, anyway, so that's a straight thrust. Um, we talked about the reverse grip, no different than anything else we talked about, it's just getting used to stuff. Right? It's just getting used to stuff. However you get used to stuff. Whatever range you are. If you're wit taking, it still works. If you're going in, it still works. Right? If you go through, bam, it still works. For the mid-grip, a couple things are different, right? I might go here, hook, penetrate, and boom, boom, boom. Right? Okay? I might stab sometimes, I might hit, I might hook, right? And then poke. Just some considerations for basic elements of striking. Thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please like, subscribe, all those kinds of things, and we'll catch you the next one. Take care.